Hey friends, welcome back to my channel for another video. I did an interview about homeschooling with my mom and my sister. It was so awesome, but you know how us ladies get, we get a little chatty. And so it got a little bit long, so I decided to make it two parts. And so today we're gonna be showing you guys part two of that interview with them on homeschooling. So I hope you enjoy it. What is one thing you wish you would have done differently in your homeschool journey? Back when we did homeschool, there was only three different curriculums that were available. We didn't have a big variety to use, but I guess I looked back and I thought if it was one thing I could have done differently, I wouldn't have done Bill Gothard's homeschool. It, it Because I was came from a teaching background and it was so, unit what study. do you call it, unit, it really freaked me out. I just, I couldn't grasp implementing all the different subjects in that with three different kids. It just, to me, was overwhelming. I just, I was more of a, let's do math, let's do Bible, let's do that. And that was really hard for me. So I felt a lot of guilt in that. Especially when we were on a trip one time and one of my kids said, I said, Nashville was the state. And I thought, don't talk to anybody about geography when we're here. Don't say a word. But then it was at that point I realized, you know, they're not getting it. So that's when I really drew back from that and started teaching geography and history and because I wanted my kids to know enough of each subject that they could, if you teach your kids how to read, read really well and teach your kids where to find the information. I mean, you can Google anything now, but back then they learned how to go through a dictionary, they learned how to go to an encyclopedia, they learned how to get the information. Mm -hmm. And if you're teaching them that, they're gonna go far. My work schedule was very flexible, so I've always worked um, even while homeschooling and, and when I was doing it, not a lot of people were doing that. It was either, you know, stay at home completely or do some kind of online school and work. So um, I, I think I would definitely set some more margin time for myself just to, to recoup and recover between working because I think I worked in homeschool too much and didn't realize that I was really doing two, two full-time jobs. I think sometimes you think you can homeschool and it's not really a job. I, I think I overcommitted at church because I felt pressure because I was a stay-at-home mom and I felt like I didn't fit completely in either world. I didn't fit completely in the full-time work mom's world because they thought it must be so nice to be home three days a week, four days a week. You only have to work one or two days a week. That must be so nice. And then the homeschool moms would be like, man, it, you must, this be so wonderful you get to get out of the house. And I'll be like, no, it's just bigger diapers. You don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I feel like I did kind of push myself just because I have that personality that I can just keep pushing until you crash. And so I think it caused me some health problems from overdoing too much when they were younger, not saying, setting a little more boundaries around um, margin for myself mm -hmm. and my family. Um, and then just, my oldest was self-starter and um, self-motivated, and so I think I probably put too much on his plate. When he was younger, we did um, some curriculum. We worked for a curriculum company and did a lot of curriculum reviews, so we had extra curriculum that we brought into the homeschool to try so that I could review it on a blog. And while it was a lot of fun because we got to see all get new things and all, it was still a lot of extra subjects and things that wouldn't have been normally on my plate if we weren't having to review it. So I think. I think maybe if I went back, I wouldn't have done some of those. I think maybe my oldest, and, and I sat him down, actually last year I sat him down, I said, you know, now that you're done homeschooling, do you do you think that we put too much pressure on you? And and his his view of it now, two years, three years out, I, you know, I did say, what do you think? Because I'm my middle one is in 11th grade and he's, he's a totally different personality. So we approached high school a little bit different with him. And I said, did you feel like we pushed you too much? Because I feel like I'm pushing my middle one at this point and trying to see if I need to make adjustments. He said, no, you know, I, it was hard sometimes to have what we had to do, but he's like, now that I'm where I am, I feel like I was very prepared for college. I feel like I knew, he said, the only big adjustments I've had in college is just living out of state and having to adjust to, you know, doing things for myself, you know, mm -hmm. taking myself to the doctor and that kind of thing. But um, academically, he was prepared for the type of academic work that he's having to do. So he mm -hmm. said that took pressure off him because he has an academic scholarship where he has to maintain a certain GPA to keep that. And so he hasn't really struggled with that. However, I feel like he has struggled at trying to shoot for way too high. So I do try to remind him that, you know, you can make a B, you can make a C, you're not gonna fail school, it's okay. Yeah. You know, so 
that sometimes just personality. Yeah. What's the biggest lesson you've learned along the way? I think what I've been seeing in the last few years is that God uses all the situations in our life for sanctification, for our growth. I don't think if I had just not had any children and had to work full time or initially when I first got out of high school, I, I felt like I was called into the mission field, you know, and I thought, oh, wow, I'm going to change the world. I'm going to be a missionary nurse, you know, and so sometimes you look back and you go, man, that was what I thought my life was going to be like. And here I am, you know, almost 23 years into marriage and kids and look anything like that was I really have I really been a world changer you know like I wanted to when I was 17 and um but yes I think without all of the trials of homeschool all the trials of church life and physical challenges and losses of you know deaths in the family all those different things those those have if you allow God to use those situations to change you then it changes you into a different person and I'm not the same person I was then because of the grace of God and the the trials that he's brought in our lives. So um, even for your children, we've gone through some things. Uh, we've had some bouts of severe depression. My husband struggled with that. And we've had, you know, family loss. My, my father-in-law died of pancreatic cancer. And we had about six months of traveling back and forth, 650 miles one way um, in the middle of the pandemic, you know, to deal with just being able to see and be with him. So we've had a lot of hard things really in the last three or four years. But you can take on yourself that attitude, what I would have done when I was younger of, oh my gosh, they're gonna miss so much. Like we have missed so much school. We've had, you know, how do you get through every day when you're emotionally struggling because you, you're walking through stuff with other people. Mm -hmm. um, but I've seen that there are gaps. Yes, there's some things that Drew didn't learn, my oldest. There's some stuff that Luke is not gonna finish before he graduates that I would have wanted him to finish. But the things that God has brought in the, the the ears of life lessons and scriptural lessons and character that he's built because of the trials. Those are things that you don't put in your curriculum list. It's not in your homeschool plan. And God just interrupts your plan with his plan. And if you're, if you've been to that, instead of resisting that, you have a lot more peace. Yeah. Um, so that's really good. Yeah. That's what I would have said is life lessons because without you train your kids how to deal with it, they watch how you deal with the life lessons the traumatic things that happen in your life and they they can either learn from it or like Jenny says not learn from it but I believe our kids we had a baby a premature baby that was in the Atlanta hospital and we were having to drive back and forth and we would take them with us they'd have to you know suit up and all the stuff and going out and that lasted almost seven months and I thought you know I look back on it now I thought did I teach them any school then did I ever go get my hair cut I don't remember getting groceries during that time. It was just, I know God was carrying us through that time, but yet the kids, they were doing fine. They were, um, I had a mother-in-law who was so helpful and she would come in and do things with them. And then Jennifer was old enough that she could help. So things worked out and they didn't miss out. They didn't miss out on anything. I was bedridden and same things were happening when I was pregnant with Anna. And they would all go to all these events at the church and different things. And I didn't get to go, but they did. So, you know, I think they learned a lot by watching what was going on in the, you know, we had, you know, of course I'm older now, so we've had a lot of different deaths and a lot of different situations happen. But I think, like Jenny said, the life lessons was something that I see that was something that goes along with homeschooling that you don't plan that do happen. But we kept on, we kept pressing on. We could have said, you know, this is not gonna work. We'll put it all in public school and we can deal with all these other problems aside from them. But then when they came home, what would they do? We'd still have to deal with it with them at night. So I think it was good. That part was good. Yeah. And sometimes the exposures that you have to the trials that are specific to your family are what shape you. You know, I know I've had done hospice nursing over the years and yeah. things like that. And, and I feel like because of life experience that we experienced so much death when I was younger, that God allowed me a special grace to, to help walk, walk alongside other people that are dealing with that situation. Mm -hmm. And um, just, you know, you dealing with forgiveness over the years, things that you had to deal with from your childhood. You know, you're not, you're not the perfect parent when your kids are born. And not even when they leave home are you still the perfect parent. But God allows you to see change if you're a believer and you're walking with Christ and you're on mission for the master. Then you see, I got to watch your sanctification. You're not the same person today that you were when I was five. And that has changed me to see God work in your life and see, you know, 
your sanctification walked out and your commitment to changing and being more like Christ has, mm -hmm. has it greatly impacted me and my children. We're all going to cry. Oh. <laughs> okay, get it together. Right. <laughs> but then one good thing I think about with all my children homeschooling now, my grandchildren, we have more time with the grandchildren. I mean, I have a son who lives on one side and a son who lives on the other side of our home and each have four kids and they all homeschool them and then she lives a couple of miles away. But Anna lives three hours away. That's the hard one. But they come and go all during the day. They'll come and you know, they'll a lot of times have problems and we talk with them about it and they're over playing and then one goes to the next house. So it's an enjoyment that us as grandparents said they were in school and they were gone all day and then came home and then they have some kind of activity afterwards and then dinner and homework, we probably wouldn't see them. Yeah. So I, I like that part a lot. But I think that's one of the best things about homeschool is that ability to be able to cultivate that relationship with your kids and grandkids. It's just not something that you can do if you're in school eight hours a day. And then like you said, sports and homework and all that. Like I've just noticed that just in our last two years of doing this with Gabe, how much my relationship with him has grown. And he's gotten older too, which is it's a new stage of life with him. But it's just been a sweet thing to see our relationship grow because we've been able to spend so much time together. And I've learned a lot about him because now I'm not only his mom, but I'm his teacher too. And it's it's been really sweet. As you homeschool them and as they get older and begin to leave and go to college or get married or whatever, I think the empty nest syndrome is bigger. A lot of people say, oh, I can't wait till they get out of the house. Well, I'd had them all that time. I was not that kind of parent. I didn't want them to leave because I had enjoyed being with them so long. So that was a struggle for me as a um, mother of children that homeschooled and always had them around. But now that they're living close by and they're around, that's nice. All right, last question. We're gonna do this one really quickly. Um, is homeschool doable for someone who isn't very structured? We got this question. We were trying to talk about it last night. It's a hard one because we're all very structured people. I feel like I'm really structured because my schedule is so unstructured. Like my work schedule is very different from week to week. So sometimes I'm working 3 to 11. Sometimes I work night shift and have to sleep during the day. So I don't get up at exactly the same time every day and go to bed exactly the same time, especially now that I have a college kid and a middle schooler and a high schooler. So for me, it's the routines have to be the same. So even though we may not get up at the same time, we still try to do things in the same order. So we mm -hmm. have a, a flow to the day, even if it doesn't start at the same yeah. time every day, but it's been a lot more challenging for me to be as structured as my personality wants to be because of that. Mm -hmm. So I feel like you have to have consistency and a routine, even if the, the time, like I never worked for me to make the time block schedules. Like I tried it, I loved it. I remember one year buying so like dry erase laminated calendar and it had all the sticky tack for every like 15 minutes. And I literally had every kid scheduled every 15 minutes and it was real, you know, you could wipe it and move it around. I was mm -hmm. like, this is gonna be awesome. I spent hours on that schedule. I think it worked for maybe a week. <laughs> it was no way to get to keep three kids moving every 15 minutes. Like I just couldn't manage yeah. all that at one time. So um, I think they need, especially when younger, they need boundaries, they need to have a routine that works, but yours is not going to look just like mine and mine's not going to look just like yours. It just, and, it, and as they get in different stages of life, you have to change it. I noticed my, mm -hmm. my older one was a morning person. And so he learned best early, like he'd get started early and jump into it and move on through. And my other two, like they're slugs on the couch for a half an hour before they won't do anything for the first 30 minutes they're up, you know, so we've had to, my oldest, my middle one now has to get a shower or he cannot do school. So he has to get a shower in the morning. Yeah. <laughs> well, you do, but, but I don't but, think that we still have one that we love, like a really schedule that works for us, but we do have the routines. But again, that's the beauty of homeschool is it's flexible and you can customize it to what works for your family. Like we, we have a funny schedule because Zach works night shifts, day shifts. So some days he's doing school in the mornings and so the school does not start till way later than we normally do it and then sometimes I'm doing it while he's sleeping and so every family is going to look different but you do need to have some form of structure or else it's just going to be chaos I mean you can't just say okay here's your school books see you let me know if you need me like that's just not going to work 
you have to have some type of order and kind of so mainly so they know what is expected of them and what they need to accomplish in the day. Well, I think we answered the majority of y'all's questions. Thank y'all for sending those in. Thank y'all for being here. I love these ladies so much. They are a huge example and blessing in my life. And I just feel so honored that they agreed graciously to be on this video. And I hope this gave you guys some inspiration, some encouragement, some ideas um, to implement into your own homeschooling. I know a lot of people who follow me are in that place where they're trying to make the decision, should I homeschool? And I hope this helped you um, with that decision. So join me again for my next video. Be sure you like this video. Be sure you subscribe before you leave. That really helps to support my channel. And thanks for coming. Can y'all please stop opening that door or spray something on it because it is so loud. Why can't y'all just stay outside? You're my oldest school. school. <laughs> I quit the whole thing. <laughs> Make all the money. <laughs> Her <and> nanny. <laughs> or a house key. Yeah, yeah, there you go. These children come in the house one more time. What are you doing? Inside. Pretty wave.